Hi everyone, my name is Nina. I am from one of the countries of Central Asia. As you know, Asians are known for their hot blood for gambling, so I'm going to tell you about how much I hate to lose. But first, I want your likes and follows. So, what does losing mean? My mom used to say that losing is half effort and half luck. Personally, I don't agree with that. If there's a loser, then there is a winner. If you're not the winner, then you're a loser. My high standards and demands in life have always been with me. At least I think so. My mother never liked going out with me. I'd see a leaf fall from a tree and it would get carried away, and I'd run after it through a crowd of people, zealously pushing everyone out the way with my hands and shouting, move aside, move aside, and stretching my arms up higher and higher to get that leaf. Then I'd climb up on something high, not even looking under my feet, and make one last dash like a real basketball player. Bam! Boom! Ah! What did I tell you? I won! The wind challenged me and I did it! I won! I caught the damn leaf! I yelled. Then I'd catch my mother's gaze on me. The shadow from her frowning forehead reached all the way down to her chin. I looked closely and saw a crowd of people, women, old people, even children get up off the ground and shake themselves off while swearing, Who's that girl? Damn you, crazy! I gritted my mouth, but I was still pleased with myself. My mother would come up to me, apologizing to the victims on the way. She took my hand and led me as far away as possible. One day, when we bought everything we needed, my mother went into one of the boutiques along the way and tried on a fancy dress. I immediately asked what it was for, and my mother told me that there was a formal reception in honor of my father that night. I immediately felt sad and scared. I just didn't understand where this fear came from. My father had been dead for a couple of years. He was a very strong man, a person with a capital letter. He used to run a department of 350 people, and he did a great job. That's why his boss loved him. He still never forgot about our family. Sometimes he helped us out. Dad didn't leave my mom and me poor, but still, our main source of income was gone. I thought for a minute about how my father and I used to work out together. He'd wake me up every morning and pull me outside for a run. It was only because of him that I made it a habit. I'm going alone. Mr. Chuck, your father's boss, is organizing the event. He's a man of strict rules, and manners are paramount in his house, my mother told me. That offended me. Are you saying I'm rude? That's not what I meant. Well, then take me with you. Are you going to behave yourself? I got down on one knee in the middle of the store, put my left hand on my right breast, and made a solemn vow. But my mother only laughed. Why are you laughing? You put your right hand on your heart, not the other way around. Do you have a heart on your right side? We laughed. It lightened the mood, and she agreed. And so the evening came. We went to an incredibly posh restaurant, where everything was on a high level. Wine, calamari, the violinists, even a red carpet. While my mom was politely greeting everyone, I went to eat. I saw a huge basket of grapes there. I just love them. I ate a few. Delicious. My eyes flickered, and I realized that I was getting a renewed sense of excitement. I swear I chased it away. I tried. But a waiter walked by and caught my hand, at which point the grape flew away, and I ran up and caught it with my mouth. Bingo! Ha! <laughs> I win again! I yelled. Mom threw a warning signal with her eyes at me. As soon as I looked away, I felt a blow to the back of my head. This little girl had admired my trick, and was now standing there throwing grapes at me for me to catch. What, you thought I'd say no? You got the wrong one! She threw me seven in a row, and I caught all of them, but didn't have time to chew them. My mouth was full. I asked her to wait, but then I heard a loud, Nina! I turned away for a split second, and the grape flew past my ear. My face began to turn red. I gathered more air into my lungs, and... No! I yelled, so that all the other grapes spit out onto the floor. Ew! The girl said and ran away, but the Hulk woke up in me, and I couldn't control myself anymore. I lost because my mom distracted me. How could she do that? In general, the rest was like a fog to me. I came to my senses when the restaurant was completely trashed and my mom and I were running away from there. Oh yes, I spent the whole night listening to the position I put her in, and my pleas for forgiveness didn't work. She put me under house arrest, but I was more upset about losing anyway. I hated losing. 
At night, I had nightmares about my father coming to me and scolding me for it. He was upset and unhappy, and I'd wake up crying. How can you? Are you my daughter or not? How can you embarrass me like that? How could you lose to a child? I'm not happy with you. I'm disappointed, Nina. No, Daddy, please! I screamed as I opened my eyes, but it was just me in my room. I was getting depressed. Before, my mother wouldn't let me out of the house, but now she couldn't kick me out. She tried her best to talk me out of it, even suggesting that I race her to the next street, but that didn't work. I felt like a piece of... Ugh, you know what I mean. I was a jerk and a loser. Meanwhile, my mom kept coming up with something new and eventually kicked me out to the store for eggs and milk. I lazily walked out of the house, and in the market, I met Mr. Chuck. Oh, I'm sorry about the other day. It's okay to worry about it. I can see the fatherly upbringing in you. Thank you, but unfortunately, I'm nothing like him. Yes, you are. He never lost. He never lost to anyone, unlike me. Hmm, it sounds like you're criticizing yourself too much. It's true. My dad was a winner in life, and I'm a loser. Well, sweetheart, let's go for a walk. Mr. Chuck was talking about the weather. I was just walking along, dragging my eggs and milk behind me. He offered to help me, picked up the bag, and bent over. My eggs fell out and broke, every single one of them. Ooh, what a shame. Did I lose to the laws of physics? What? What are you talking about? You busted my balls. My mom's gonna kill me. Well, isn't that right? The earth challenged me and I lost. So now I'm a loser and I'm a nobody. What's the big deal? Eggs fell because you bent over. That's what I'm saying, Nina. I didn't know what he was talking about, but Mr. Chuck elaborated. He said that the world is too full of exaggeration, both those who are lucky and those who aren't. Just then, a grandmother fell down on the ground in front of us. She lost consciousness. I called an ambulance and we ran up to her. The ambulance came quickly and they gave her a heart massage. She had a heart attack and after about 15 minutes, they realized they couldn't save her. I felt sorry for her. I cried and Mr. Chuck asked, Say, Nina, these doctors, they couldn't save the old lady. Are they losers? They lost to death itself. And I was like, no, they tried. They're not deities, they're doctors. They didn't save her life, but they've saved dozens of others. And Mr. Chuck smiled and said, That's right, Nina, that's right. And then we sat down right by a flower bed on the ground, and he pulled out his tablet and showed me old videos. What? Is that my dad? There are moments from videos where he had projects falling apart, big contracts falling apart, moments of personal loss. I get it, he was raising you as a leader. He just wanted you to be stronger than him, but he never thought you were a loser. Look in his office. There are pictures of you all over the place. Awards, achievements, diplomas. It's all over his office. He wanted to look like a hero in your eyes, not a tyrant, Nina. My tears were flowing. Did my father believe in me that much? I always thought he hated me because I was a loser. In my mind, I recalled our morning walks. Get up, come on, run. Wider legs, higher knees, posture, breathe right. Are you a fighter or what? Nina, are you a fighter or what? Yes, father, I am a fighter. I am a fighter. I screamed in tears and kept running with a terrible cramp in my legs. After his death, I lived with a great weight in my heart, the weight of letting him down. He died suddenly, and I didn't even have a chance to say goodbye. My discussion with Mr. Chuck cleared things up. I went home and cried on my mother's shoulder. I was relieved. I was so relieved. Less desperate. I now clearly understood the line between can and I don't need to. My name is Jenny. I'm the ugly girl in the class. And if someone thinks that I'm exaggerating, that I'm making a mistake, then they're wrong. My face is completely disfigured. It is covered with scars, and these painful memories will remain with me forever. But now I will tell you all about it, about how I became the winner of a beauty contest against all odds. Look who's here, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Come on, <laughs> honey, how can hair hide such a squalor? It's just that you are unlucky in life. Nora and her guards, get your places now. Do not sit on the tables, said the teacher. This girl, Nora, is my classmate. 
She's beautiful, rich, and loves to bully people like me. I didn't always look like this. I was born normal, but just a few years ago, there was a tragedy. Our house caught on fire, my room was blocked, and I couldn't get out. The fire spread quickly from room to room, and I could have jumped down to the tree under the window, but I heard Molly, my little sister, screaming. As I reached her through the flames, my face got burnt. I received a large percentage of burns on my face and hands, and after a lot of time, effort, and money spent on rehabilitation, recovery, and cosmetics, I still look nothing like before. My friend Katie came up to me then. Hey, Jan, can we go to lunch? Okay, come on, we'll just eat on the roof. All right, friend. I'm really sorry that Nora was bothering you again. Damn, if I'd been in that class, I wouldn't have kept my mouth shut. My fists have been itching to give her a good one for a long time. I laughed. Then it's a good thing you had another lesson. Thank you, I know you always stick up for me. But you know, today I really thought about it. I'm a freak. Who's going to look at me now? Nora is right after all. I'm not pretty, and I never will be. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Katie said. First of all, who is she to tell you about your appearance? Secondly, anyone who knows how to do makeup is considered a fairy godmother. My sister has been a makeup artist for many years, and she won't let you lie. There are people much uglier than you, if it's any consolation, but after a trip to the beauty salon, everyone looks like a queen. I was still dubious. Are you saying I should try makeup? Why not? I've never worn makeup, and I don't think it's for me. I'm sorry, I don't want to be a freak with despair written all over my face. Katie took a bite of her sandwich and said, You're not looking for anything, mate. Nothing. Then Nora came in. Class, the traditional beauty contest is coming up very soon. You know who wins every year. Yes, it's me, but that's not the point. Now, I want to announce a couple of names. These girls will participate in the competition on behalf of our class. First on the list is me, then Nicole Ginger, one of Nora's friends, and, ta-da, Jenny North. This is probably some kind of mistake. I can't, and I won't. I do not know who approved the lists. Apparently, someone entered you in the candidates several times. Maybe you did it yourself? Nora said very haughtily. No, no, I can't. You know the rules. Nora jeered. Anyone who refuses to participate will be suspended for five days. This will be reflected in your file when you go to college. Refusing to participate in the life of the school is not a very wise decision. The bell rang and everyone left the classroom. I ran to look for my friend Katie in the crowd. At this time, Nora and her friends went outside. Nora, you did this, didn't you? One of Nora's friends, Nicole, said. Did you enter Jenny's name? Why? Nora said innocently. Why would you do that? She is so complex, Nicole said. And why do you care? Just, isn't that too mean of you? What are you trying to do? Nicole cried. Listen up, Nikki, I love making fun of her, Nora replied. She's ugly, and I want her to feel that way as much as possible. Do you have something against it? Have you forgotten who you're friends with? Don't play with fire, okay? I didn't know who had entered my name or why. It was so absurd. I didn't want to be there, standing on the same stage as Nora. She hates me so much, and here's another reason to laugh at me. But I didn't want any trouble getting into college, so I figured I'd embarrass myself one more time. So what? My whole life is a disgrace. I'll never win this contest anyway. With these thoughts and attitudes, I began to prepare. Katie helped me, picked up outfits, helped me with a program, and how good that her sister was just a wonderful makeup artist. And when the day came, I appeared in front of the school in an incredibly chic black dress, light lace short gloves that hid the burns, and on my head was a small hat with a short veil. I was given such a makeover that I didn't even recognize myself, and when I saw my reflection in the mirror, I cried bitterly. 
can I still be beautiful? I asked myself at the time. You're a beauty and you're going to win, Katie said. I'm so worried, maybe I shouldn't have dressed up like this, I replied. You tell my sister that, <laughs> Katie snorted. Did she do your makeup for three hours for nothing? Just try to bring her victory and now go. When it was my turn, I sat down across from the host and he asked me how I got the scar on my face. I had never told anyone the story. Only Katie knew about it. Suddenly, a lump rose in my throat and I remembered the horror in my sister's eyes and my thoughts that I might lose her forever. I told everyone how it was. The host was silent. There was complete silence in the hall. Then he asked if I regretted it, because now my whole life is like this. Beauty is a relative concept, I said. Just yesterday I was hiding in the corridors, and now I'm participating in a beauty contest. I can't win it, I know, and I didn't mean to. And at that moment, I knew for sure that I had to save my little sister. Whatever it took, I said, and everyone in the hall applauded. A few minutes later, the results of the voting were announced, the jury and the audience. The host came on stage, and after two agonizing minutes, he announced, Jenny. My mouth and eyes widened in surprise. It can't be. What? It can't be, Nora yelled. Katie hugged me and kissed me, and then kicked me out onto the stage. It was the happiest day of my life. I realized then that inner beauty also plays a big role. Without it, I definitely would not have won. Tell me guys, did you like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Do not forget to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.